money. I don't have your money. I know I'd be a lot happier with some extra cash. Is this about money? Oh. With practical tips and a focus on scripture, let's talk money with Dave and Reb from More Than Enough, the financial show that speaks to the heart of your money story. Real conversations about money for real people. Let's talk money. Are you ready to talk money, Reb? I'm ready to talk money. Happy New Year. Well, we actually had the New Year show already. already, Yeah, we did. It's Happy New Year again. Yeah, January is all Happy New Year. If you know me, I like to celebrate. It's it's all just happy. Oh, (gasps) there's an extra voice. Did you hear that? It's all just happy. You might have recognized that voice from the past. Okay, so this is the uh, financial fitness show with Lynn Fraser. (laughs) Isn't that what we called it? Uh Uh-huh, it It was called that. So welcome to the show, Lynn. This is not the financial fitness show with Lynn Fraser, but Lynn Fraser is in the studio with us today. Yes, and I'm thrilled to be in the studio with you today. Mm -hmm. It feels like coming home. Actually, I think I did. (laughs) You did come home. That's right. So so we're gonna we're gonna get the full lowdown on on. uh, And if you've been listening to the podcast over the last number of years, you would have heard us reference Lynn and and what she's doing. And and so we're going to kind of bring all of you who who don't know that up to speed in a minute. But we don't know Lynn. I don't know Lynn mm-hmm. because that's possible. There might be people. Yeah, there might yeah. be that's people. very possible that there's some people that don't know me. <laughs> yes. So, and, and and I don't really know. I was just thinking, um, there really isn't another show that we have. We done another show with you, Lynn? And yeah, in the last few years, we certainly okay. have. Yeah, when you were back the last time. Yeah. So okay, so let's yeah, let's jump in and do okay, the intro. Yeah. So we'll if you want go. that show, you have to search in you know more than enough.ca, Search in the search bar, Lynn Fraser, and then I'm sure we put it in the title, and there yeah. you can hear yes. some archive shows. So that's a place to go. If you're listening on your podcasting platform again, I'm just a little reminder. Please rate us. It really does help. I was just perusing uh, the top financial Christian financial podcasts. I just Googled that this week because of course I want to know where we rank and they didn't give us a ranking, but we were on a number of podcasting platforms that I actually didn't know we were on. So that's pretty cool that different platforms are picking up the show. And so thank you because that is you, the listener, you people who are downloading it and saying, yeah, I'm listening to it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We want um, people to hear the good news. Should be money. number one. No. <laughs> I, th- I think you should be number one. You're number one in my books. Well, for sure. thanks, we Lynn. Mm-hmm. Anyway, okay, we're already, okay, so Lynn, why don't you, before we read the scripture, because we normally read scripture at the beginning, but I think it's more important right at this moment for you to tell us who you are. And I, I guess I could segue, years ago, you did financial fitness you are the reason we're sitting here. Actually, well, God's the reason, but you were a great part of that story for us. You did mortgages before in your past life, mm-hmm. and you graciously uh, handed the baton over to us a few years ago, and you left. <laughs> I did. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> well, well actually, no. I, no, I'm not, not sorry I'm at not all. Sorry. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is we we do kind of expect honesty on the show. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just so tell us idea. what you're doing. Uh, so after you, because some people still call the office and ask for you, and I say, nice. well, actually, she's been gone for a few years, and uh, can okay. we help you instead? So, anyway. so the more than enough story. The more more than enough certainly was home for me for a number of years, and you know we built it together, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so when it was time to hand over the reins, there was no one else that I would have considered handing over the reins to other than you two. Mm-hmm. So I'm grateful mm-hmm. that I could yeah. <laughs> and move on to the next step. And so the father has called me to Southeast Asia. And um, and when I transitioned out of more than enough, it was initially, it was not knowing for sure where I was going. But I knew that he was calling me out. And so um, we just began the process of preparing, which meant bringing you on board and working together for a period of time to help in that transition process and then getting rid of my stuff and mm-hmm. renting out my house and mm-hmm. moving in with a friend and doing all the research and all that I needed to do and lots of prayer time and asking the father where he wanted me. And, and he has sent me to Southeast Asia. Wow. And it's a nice, warm climate. Yeah, but I got to tell you, um, I'm enjoying the cold. 
<laughs> I, I know people here think I'm crazy. No. People there thought I was crazy <laughs> that I would come back at this time of year. But I was walking through one of my favorite places in the city and through Mud Lake. And it was so beautiful and, and crisp and clear and bright and sunny and I loved every minute. And I said, oh, God, let me not love it too much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for this gift of being back in cool air. But yeah, because it's 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 yeah. hot all the time. It's and, hot all the yeah. time. And there's no seasons yeah. and it doesn't ever feel like Christmas. I have to work at thinking, oh, yeah, this is Christmas. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But this wow. is wonderful to be back at this time of year. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So what are you doing? Can you tell us some parts of it? I sure I can. Um, so. I felt called to this to the cause of human trafficking and um, the country that I'm in is not known as it's not as well known for the trafficking trafficking issues, but it's massive. Um, mm -hmm. And so one of the challenges with in the human trafficking rescue work is that 85 percent of those that are rescued become victims again because they don't have hope they don't they're already traumatized and they're easy prey for the predators to to find them and to bring them back into the world that they've escaped from and so my intention is to create a training center a vocational training center that will um, give them an opportunity for healing and wholeness and be restored and have mm -hmm. some skills and then help to bridge those skills into uh, into the tourism industry in a way that's positive. Wow. And so continuing, continuing to build community with them to make sure they're staying safe. Um, yeah, wow. so that's the plan. Wow. Yeah, I, I mean, that's a, in a sense, an interesting perspective, right? You think, okay, we rescued someone from the 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 human trafficking world and then they get rescued to a place where there may not be family there may not be community there may not be support there may not be a job there may not be and you go okay so great we've rescued them but having a place to land where you can say okay we're gonna set you up with a essentially career training we're gonna set you up with some mm -hmm. stability we're gonna give you access to as you said, get healing and maybe reconnect with family or maybe create maybe, new family. right? Or maybe <laughs> you know? create new family if the so, old one's not safe. Huge. Yeah, yeah. that's huge. You know, and I, th I think it does a couple of things. One, it, um, um, it does provide like long-term healing mm -hmm. uh, for those that are rescued, but it also helps to remove a bottleneck from those that are working so diligently to do the rescue work because they can only rescue so many uh, and their resources are, are spread too thin. Right. And mm -hmm. so by having a place, like a next step uh, mm -hmm. for those that have been rescued and had some restoration work done, um, it opens the door um, so that they can save more. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, Correct. and we do know, I know without a doubt that Jesus is the only one that can heal those wounds. And so mm -hmm. um, I'm in a part of the world where the gospel isn't known. Right. I'm in a part of the world where the gospel is not spoken. And so I have to go. I, mm -hmm. I mean, good counseling isn't going to fix it. Right. Nothing's mm -hmm. going to fix it but Jesus. And so I know in bringing the gospel and the truth and the life, and he's the only one that can heal those wounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. The story I'm actually thinking of while I listen to you is when... Um, I, I'm brain fading on the names of the disciples, Peter and John, when they went to the man and they said, you know, silver and gold have I none, but what I have, I, I give you rise, get up and walk. And so when I read those stories, I often think, well, what did he do next? Mm -hmm. So it's great that he could walk, but his whole life shifted. Yeah. So in a sense, what you're doing, and we don't hear the story maybe of the deacons and the elders at that time in the church having a place for a man who was healed to have a, a new life mm -hmm. because that would be really hard because he'd have to work and he's never worked before and he begged his whole he's life, begged right? his whole life so it's like this paradigm shift and we often don't think about that other part of the story but that's really what you're thinking about is that yeah. other part yeah that's yeah. neat yeah. But this morning, because I was just going to say that actually plays pretty well into 
the scripture that you have ready. I know. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to read was that, that because planned? no, it Great wasn't. Segue, well, that was like, that just... was hopefully <laughs> the Lord's planning. But I mean, I'm going to read your one of your favorite verses. Mm-hmm. Your favorite. If you if we I ever do a quiz, be reading this, but I know no, if we ever do a quiz on what Dave versus Dave loves, all of you just say Matthew six because that's if you what just it is. if you just do Matthew six, life will be well. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. I'm working on that. I'm, I'm so working. Am I. On, I'm working. I'm memorizing it. Anyway, verse 19, 20, and twenty one. Many of us are, have heard these verses, so don't tune in with your spirit, not with your mind, because your mind will just say, "Yeah, yeah, I know it." But how about you listen with your spirit when I read these verses this morning? Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Um, These are verses that I've heard since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. And then you ask yourself, well, what on earth does it mean to lay up for yourself a treasure in heaven where moth and rust doesn't destroy? I, I actually... The funny thing this morning, I um, I was on social media and I read, read a post from my niece and she's like, what is it with people every night outside my building going to check all the unlocked cars and stealing stuff? She says it's a regular event and I forgot to lock my car again last night and I had she had her sunglasses stolen and something else stolen and she was and so I'm you know this morning I'm reading this and I'm like, oh, well, thieves do break in and steal our stuff. Mm-hmm. But what does it mean? And this is what we're going to talk about this morning, because part of what you're doing in your effort to help people in another nation that doesn't have the gospel is creating a place of training and learning. But it takes capital. It takes funds. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to talk this morning about kingdom investment and what is it? And and in light of this verse, how do we do it? How do we lay up that treasure in heaven and invest in the kingdom? So I don't know. That's like a big, broad question this morning. Yeah, so this will be uh, <laughs> step one of like nine podcasts, right? They go. But Lynn, you're on the show. So let's give you a, a poke at this first, right? In the sense of for you, in the context of where you, you've you gone from the business world here in North America, in the finance industry. So money, 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 all of that. That is that world. So you did that for, you know, 15, 20 years. However many years you did it, you don't have to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> a long time, David. A long, long time. <laughs> and and what you said earlier, you know, God really did call you out, and yeah. and now you're in a different world. I mean, in all kinds of ways, this is a different world. You're not in North America. You're not in the finance industry. All all that. So I'm gonna just kind of that's the context, and then we have Matthew six, and you go. What does it mean to invest in in kingdom treasure? Well, I did start being uh, in the financial world and um, actually I used to work for a finance company. So one of those people that encourage you to borrow money at high interest rates. That was (laughs) (laughs) pre-Jesus. Thank you, Lord. (laughs) He delivered me from that. Mm -hmm. Um, But um, I was taught to invest 10%. Of right. what I earned. And so I was, yeah, I was a single mom at the time and 10% of what I earned seemed like a lot, but I had it taken straight off my paycheck. I never saw it. And I did that for a number of years. Mm-hmm. And um, I, at the time, that's whatever, anyone that was investing, that's what they did. And you put it in mutual funds and mm-hmm. hopefully it grows. And that's what I was taught to do. Um didn't always grow there, but <laughs> we won't <laughs> I, go there. I, I made some <laughs> other decisions later about what to do with it. But um, so I've invested in the way in the way of the world. But at the time, I didn't realize the purpose. I didn't have purpose for it. I just did what everybody did. Mm-hmm. And um, after I got saved, once I came to know Jesus, then my focus shifted, and so I started to give. Mm-hmm. And I, and not just save, but I started to give, and I I think I think I was a pretty generous giver. I heard mm-hmm. right from the get go that I was supposed to give, and so I started giving, 
And that was where kingdom investing started. It was giving to the things that I felt that the Lord was calling me to. And so I started investing in a future without knowing where it was going to take or it, I invested out of obedience and out of knowledge that that's what his word said. And because I loved him and I trusted him that, and I just generously or willingly gave back to him and trusted that he would do with it as he wished. And so, so, so let me stop yeah. there just to if, clarify, because mm -hmm. there are some people who may not understand. So, uh, so the, when you were investing, the first investing you were talking about, it was mutual funds, RSPs, you earn interest, whatever, mm -hmm. for the future retirement. But when you start it, when you give, you're talking about giving to a place where you're not getting uh, that interest return, right? So That's like right. a charity or a church or buying somebody or groceries person, yeah. or yeah, a person or that's what you mean. That's because it yeah. is interesting, yeah. right? It's, it's when, when we talk the finance industry, we think I'm going to invest money or I'm going to invest time and that's going to translate into more money, right? So I'll invest some time. I'll go to work. I'll exchange my time for money, then I'll use some of that money and I'll exchange that money for more money. And, and that's kind of the way. But if we're reading Matthew 6, and if I'm hearing you right, you're saying, then I started to actually take some of the money and now it's translating into something that I can't quite define or know what that is. I just know that I may not see the return on this side of of eternity. Yeah. That, yeah, that's true. When I when I talk about giving, I'm talking about kingdom investing. Um giving it um investing in what the Lord is calling mm -hmm. me to do and and trusting him with the returns. And actually his returns are far greater than any returns I can find here. Right. Um you know, they're tenfold, hundredfold, thousandfold, like you can multiply it way beyond our imagination. So um that's the kind of investing I started doing. And, and um, it's an interesting thing. The worldly investing that I did in my early days has positioned me now that I can give forever mm -hmm. and invest forever in the kingdom. Um, I'm not wealthy. I'm not rich. Um, according, in our North, according, <laughs> I was just in North American say, standards. According to our North American <laughs> standards, no. But... Um, I can go without, without debt. Mm -hmm. I don't have any debt uh, holding me back. I don't have anything holding me back from going and stepping into where he wants me to invest next. Mm -hmm. and, and that investment means it's not just finance and it's not just time. It's my life, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. he's, he's, mm -hmm. and, but he's asking us all for our lives. It's not, I'm not the only one that's investing my life. Um, so we're not talking ab about 10%. Like we're, we're not just saying, well, we're going to give here and we're going to invest just this part of our life. We're doing, we're talking a hundred percent. Is that what you mean? I don't, I don't see that Jesus did that. Like when he went to the cross, he didn't put just his hand or his foot <laughs> or his elbow or his shoulder. No, it was all of him. All wow. of him was fully invested mm -hmm. and that's what he's calling us to do. And you know, it's interesting. I had someone uh, introduced me to a friend the other day and she started talking about, you know, this is my friend Lynn and, you know, Lynn has given up so much. She's given up her life. She's given up her business. She's given, well, she's given up her family. She's given, she sacrificed so, so much. Mm -hmm. And as she's talking, I'm thinking, I don't, Who's she talking about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's, I, not a sac it's not a sacrifice. Is that what you mean? Yeah. It, it, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's, that's what I mean. It didn't. Well, it's interesting because I've heard this idea of, you know, investing and divesting, right? The idea of if I give five bucks, I have five dollars less. And so from some perspectives, that's a divestment, right? I think that's if that's a word. Die, that that, that right? sounds like dying. To oh, whatever, right? I don't know. <laughs> but, but when you think of it, you have invested your life, your all of these things into something else um, in terms of bringing a return and going, well, I'm going to leave the return up to the Lord. Right. You know, well, and he's, he's much better at it than, mm -hmm. than the mutual funds guys. And, uh, you know, sorry, mm -hmm. I, I have some really good Christian it, friends that are mutual funds guys. I'm not taking no. a, yeah. not knocking them. I'm just saying that God is much better at, at multiplying what we invest. 
and so the returns you, are greater. When people say that it's a sacrifice for you, what's your response? Is it a sacrifice to invest this way with your life that you've given everything left the country and I don't I don't feel like it's a sacrifice. Mm. I really don't. Now there's days I don't like it <laughs> when it's 35 degrees and 90 some percent humidity and and I'm just a pool yeah, on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking I, it's 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 sometimes it's harder work and sometimes there's challenges a lot of times there's challenges and mm -hmm. there's been times i've been afraid because i wasn't sure where i was and my phone was dead and i didn't yeah. know the language but it that doesn't mean that to me that's not a sacrifice mm -hmm. um what would be i've thought about it recently and that there were some challenges with my visa and I wasn't sure where things were going. I thought, what would it look like for me to return to Canada? And, and the thought of that, the thought of not pursuing what God's called me to do, that would be the ultimate sacrifice, mm -hmm. not one he's asking me to make. Mm -hmm. It would, it would be, it would be, oh, it would just be devastating, mm -hmm. divesting and devastating yeah. to me mm -hmm. to have to return and not have fulfill what he's called me to do wow and that's true I, i've had other friends that have i've had friends that have been deported and others mm -hmm. that have had to return to their homeland and it's really really hard yeah. knowing that the father's called us and so don't. how i mean there how would you encourage people to become kingdom investors then to, so can to, i jump in though because i think part of this conversation goes to uh, and I hear that from you, Lynn, that it's not about building your your own kingdom, your own wealth, right? Again, if we go back to your story and say, when I was investing 10% and I was building our RSPs and all of that, which again, is not bad, but it was essentially the focus was, hey, you're going to have more money down the road and we hope we invest the money in a way mm -hmm. that that's going to happen mm -hmm. and again nothing wrong with that math no. but what i'm hearing from you is saying i don't hear, see this as a a sacrifice because i actually see it from god's kingdom perspective or god's perspective and saying hey the the lives of the people that you are going to help the lives of the people that you are going to provide that's more important than your comfort. Um, and so, you know, again, building our own kingdom is often about building our own comfort, our own castle, our own place and saying, okay, God's given you something else to build. Is that right? Yeah. And I would think, you know, all of our listeners, all of, all of yeah. our listeners knowing Jesus, mm -hmm. if they sat and t took a few minutes to think about when did I have the greatest amount of joy? recently what was a thing that gave me the greatest amount of joy it would 99 percent of the time i think it's where they gave or they had an impact on someone else's life or they brought joy to someone else mm -hmm. it wasn't about them it was about someone else mm -hmm. and those kinds of returns to me <clears throat> are uh they make my heart sing mm -hmm. you know there's i can't there's no dollar amount that makes my heart sing other than maybe for a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds, perhaps <laughs> go, Oh, gee, that would be really nice. But, um, but it's not lasting the things that bring me the greatest amount of joy is when I see, when I have these young ladies around me that, um, are, you know, are feeling like they've been mothered by me, <laughs> mm. um, that feel like they've, they've been loved or encouraged and, and I see a change in them. Like that's what brings me joy. And there's no money that mm -hmm. could replace that. Nothing. So those are the kinds of returns. So right here. So those are returns I'm getting right here. But mm -hmm. I know that there's eternal rewards that are far greater. Um, that that I, you have no idea that you can't quantify. I can't quantify. No. I know that they're great. I know that that I know that my father's pleased that I'm listening and following. And so there will be returns, but what mm -hmm. they look like. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So on that and, and part of this discussion, we also want to invite people, um, if we can do that to part, 
participate in what you are doing. Oh, oh okay. So I'm going to jump in here. Rib gave absolutely. me the look and I was like, what I know, are you looking at I'm me like, for? I'm so because uh, and, and I was right on that track, by the okay, way, you were, I, okay. I was like, I was just like, are you going to, and it takes, you... it takes money, right? Scripture <laughs> talks about, Hey, we use ungodly mam and we use our resources here on earth to have an eternal impact. And, and we don't have to look much further than Christ to see that he he did what he did and it had an eternal impact for us right and so again scripture says well it's our natural natural response to christ to say yes if i've been given resources whether it's time or money or or whatever the resources i'm going to invest them in the things that tweak my heart and so if if you're listening and you're going hey human trafficking what what lynn is doing that's tweaking my heart that's God clearly going, hey, I'm touching your heart. And yeah. where your heart is, there your treasure will be. So, and the flip is true too, that if you have some treasure, and here's the push, if you have some treasure and you want to invest in a kingdom work, I can wholeheartedly say, hey, Lynn will happily take whatever Absolutely. resources. And again, it, maybe it's money, maybe it's time, maybe it's prayer, maybe it's encouragement, maybe, whatever it is, if, it, if this conversation and specifically the work that Lynn's doing in Southeast Asia around human trafficking, if that tweaks you, then reach out to More Than Enough. You can just go to the website, morethanenough.ca, or you can info at, more than, uh, info at morethanenough.ca, send an email, and we'll connect you with, with Lynn. We'll connect you with, with what she's doing. And we are, I mean, I'm totally excited to, to see the kingdom work, you know, building and doing, and, and we know there's eternal, there's eternal work going on there. So, Amen. you know, there you go, Reb. Uh, is that good? Yeah, that's very good. Okay. Was... So I want to pray, and, and let's just take a moment to pray, and we're going to pray for Lynn. And if you'll join us, um, this is, again, from a human perspective, this is a big deal. Um, it's hard work. There's a lot of things that, that uh, in this kind of, of kingdom work that are going to come up against it. And so, Lynn, we just want to bless you. We want to just pray for you. Uh, and, and really, we want to just, again, say that the Lord has everything that you need. Um, and so, Lord, we just ask that those things would not be, be hindered, that they would not be restricted, that they would not uh, be stuck in the heavenly somewhere as there's a battle going on. But the resources that Lynn needs when she needs them would become available. And so, Lord, we thank you that you're not only restricted to just our sphere of influence, but you've got other ways and resources that, that can make that happen. And so, Lord, we just thank you for that. We thank you that there is kingdom, that your kingdom is coming here on earth as mm -hmm. it is in heaven. And that you're doing that through Lynn. And, and we just we just bless you with that, Lynn, thank you. in Christ's name. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I, what, why are you looking at me now? Oh, I'm not looking at you. Well, I, 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 I lied. You want me to, I, I am looking I, at I, you. Am I to end the show? You normally end the show. Yes. Would you like me to end the show? Yeah, do it. You do it well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's so fun to be. So we have about 10 seconds left go. and that's the big stall. Join us next week when we talk money. Amen. <laughs> Let's Talk Money is a division of More Than Enough Financial Fitness, where God is transforming hearts and bringing hope for today and freedom for tomorrow. For more information or to comment on today's show, please visit morethanenough.ca.